Hello, I'm Adam Rosen, and today I'm going to talk to you about the approach for hip replacement. We're going to cover the anterior approach and the posterior approach, the on-table versus off-table, and answer some of the questions that you might have. Hi, I'm Adam Rosen. So today we're going to go into some detail. To be honest, if you don't want to listen to this entire video, the most important thing is to find a surgeon that is good and a surgeon that you trust. Because at the end of all of this, what I'll come to show you is that most data does not prove that one approach is better or superior to the other. Um, but to give you more information, and if you're interested, stick around. The approaches have been described in a very classic uh, book by uh, Dr. Hoppenfeld, who has a book about all of the different approaches of the hip. And the anterior approach is about 100 years old, as, as well as the posterior approach. It was just around the 1980s where the anterior hip approach got more popularized uh, for doing a hip replacement surgery. Previously, it had been used mostly for treating fractures. So understand that the anterior approach is not a new approach, um, but it's newer to perform hip replacements when compared to other approaches like the lateral or the posterior approach. And the anterior approach goes between two strap muscles. We do have to cut or ligate a vessel to get access, and then those two strap muscles, which are about the width of both of my fingers, have to get split to get access down to the hip joint where in the posterior approach, you have a big muscle, the gluteus maximus. So the entire muscle is here, and we have to find fibers that run between them and separate it that way. So you're separating one big muscle in the posterior approach, or you're separating two smaller muscles in the anterior approach. And some people are also uh, concerned about the idea of cutting muscles. So again, in both approaches, we're splitting, not cutting across the grain. Where in the posterior approach, there's typically one tendon of one of the external rotators called the piriformis. And in most cases, that has to be cut and then repaired at the end of the surgery. Sometimes you can operate around it without having to cut it in the posterior approach. In the anterior approach, it's not as common to release those tendons, but sometimes the tendon does have to be released um, or is accidentally or inadvertently damaged by putting in the stem or the brooch. So both anterior and posterior have their risks of injury uh, where the posterior more commonly releases the piriformis tendon and then repairs it. The anterior approach sometimes releases the tendon but sometimes damages it in preparation of the thigh bone part when the stem is going in. Now there's one other tendon issue that you should be aware of. So on the side of your hip where most people are familiar pointing to the troche or hip bursa, there's a series of tendons, most commonly the gluteus medius and minimus that can be injured or damaged. And this can occur with normal hips, it can occur with arthritic hips. The important thing to understand is it can cause pain and a limp. And if you're doing a posterior approach, when we come through the approach, you're looking and staring at those tendons. And if they're diseased, damaged, or torn, they can be repaired. Whereas when we do the anterior approach, you have to know that those tendons are normal because we do not see them and there is no way to repair them so talking to your surgeon if you have lateral based pain and symptoms to make sure that you don't have a tendon tear because if you're having an anterior approach, there's no way to repair those tendons at the time of your hip replacement surgery. Now I've seen some very uh, educated, keen patients ask questions specifically even about the table. So you can do an anterior approach either on table or off table. And off table doesn't mean we do it on the floor, but there's a special table that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to perform an anterior approach, but you need an assistant. And that was the initial way when it first came out that it was really popularized. More recently, more people and more surgeons have been going to what we consider off table, which is using a regular operating room table, not the specialized table. And you don't require this special extra assistant to manipulate the, the beams and the arms on that table to perform the operation. Those studies now recently are starting to show that it's actually even quicker and faster as far as time in the operating room and the operation if you're doing this procedure, the direct anterior, off table on a regular operating room table. The other big topic that comes up when discussing the two different approaches is dislocation. So 
Some people initially early on thought that anterior approach had a lower dislocation rate than posterior. And there are some studies that show that, and there's some studies that don't show that. Just know that if you have an anterior approach, if you have a dislocation, which is possible, more commonly the ball comes out the front anteriorly. And if you have a posterior approach and you have a dislocation, more commonly the hip will dislocate or the ball comes out the back posteriorly. The real important thing is ask your surgeon, what is their dislocation rate? Most good surgeons should know. And if you have a very, very high dislocation rate as a surgeon, that would be a reason for us to ask exactly why. And is there something that I can do differently or better that would lower the dislocation rate? But although some early studies were starting to show that it was better with a lower risk anteriorly, more frequently and commonly now, studies haven't really shown that one is superior than the other approach. But the big question really is, do patients do better with one approach versus the other? So in these next two studies, uh, the first study showed that there were only short-term differences, meaning that at six weeks, the patients that had an anterior did better than the patients that had a posterior approach. But at six months and one year, there was no difference between groups. The second study um, was actually a pretty good study doing what we call a randomized study, and it compared the anterior versus the posterior, and they found that the direct anterior patients got off the walker five days earlier. So it was 10 days on a walker versus 15 if you had the posterior approach. Um, but again, at two months and at one year, there was absolutely no difference in the patients that had an anterior approach versus the patients that had a posterior approach. This next study looked at a scoring system that we use called the forgotten joint score. And uh, this is a scoring system that asks you questions. Do you notice your hip or your diseased joint um, at rest in the car when you're walking? And that's where when you compare knee replacements to hip replacements, hip replacements always do better. They have a better forgotten joint score where knee replacement patients always tend to remember. And they looked at patients that had a direct anterior approach for hip replacement versus a posterior approach. And they were comparing specifically the forgotten joint score. And they were unable to show that there was a difference in the forgotten joint score when you compared patients with an anterior approach versus patients with a posterior approach. Is there anything that you should be concerned about? Well, yes. Uh, and the studies have actually shown this, that there's a substantial learning curve when surgeons are starting to do a new approach. And different studies have said you need a, a minimum of 50. Some studies have shown that you need a minimum of 100. So it's an important question to ask if your surgeon is doing the anterior approach, how many have they done? How familiar or comfortable? Or are you still in their learning curve? There was another study that was done out of Stanford that actually looked at patients that were referred that needed a revision and they actually found that um, patients were more likely to have loosening of the stem, which made them concerned as to whether or not the approach or patients that were having this approach with surgeons that were new to using this approach could be a cause for these patients to require a second operation or an early revision after their initial hip replacement surgery. And you may be wondering about getting home. Is there a better chance to get home if you have one approach versus the other? And studies have not shown this to be true. So this study here talked about discharge and walking time. So they found no difference in the time to get up and walk when patients had either an anterior approach or a posterior approach. And also more importantly, they were not able to show that the approach had any effect on being discharged to home. So if you've gotten this far in the video, thanks for sticking around. I hope you found the information useful. What's interesting is that in our world, things come and go. When posterior approach was more common, even doctors in training looked to come to institutions where they were learning the new anterior approach. And now so many people are doing the anterior approach that a lot of those same young physicians and doctors in training are coming to places so they can learn the posterior approach, which for the most part is more utilitarian. We can do bigger cases and revisions and everything through the posterior where we might be limited in an anterior approach. And what studies are now showing is that there's no significant difference between a good surgeon doing an anterior approach and a good surgeon doing a posterior approach. But it would be important for you to ask your surgeon as to which approach they're doing, which one they're more familiar with, which one they have less complications, and also whether or not you're a good candidate for one approach or the other. Some patients may not have the right uh, 
body habitus, or they might not have arthritis or a contracture or bony abnormality that would make one approach better or worse than the other one. The overall most important thing for you to know, though, is that if you are going to have a hip replacement surgery, is find a surgeon again that you like, a surgeon that you trust, a surgeon that has a good reputation, and a surgeon that is willing to take care of you whether or not they do the anterior posterior approach. We now know that studies show that the outcomes are equivalent and you shouldn't feel that you're getting a worse surgery or a worse approach if a surgeon is doing one versus the other. So thanks again for listening. If you enjoy this information, please subscribe so you'll be updated when new videos like this come out. Click the thumbs up button so other people scouring the internet for videos and information like this can find this type of information. And until next time, stay safe.